about being ready, ready to be useful. Uba no flow by useless the life in. Uba no full and by throw away. Ukona but a wuko. You know, one of those people, whether or not you are present, doesn't really make a difference. Because there's nothing that you add to the conversation. There's no value that you add in there. So this entire weekend, our entire walk with Christ is about preparation to be used by God and used of God. And when I read the scripture, you know, I got stuck on one word. One word, and it was the first word. That word is, if. But I kept on going to this if. If anyone cleanses himself, then he will. You see, so what is if? If is a conjunction and it introduces a conditional clause. In other words, if that if does not happen, everything else that you say in there is not going to materialize. It really does not matter. It's like saying, you will pass the exam, the exam with an exemption, with flying colors, if you attend your classes and you study hard. You will marry the man that God has chosen and set apart for you, who is going to help you realize the vision that God has given you and help you exercise the gifts that God has planted in you. If you lean on the Lord with all your understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. And if you allow Him to direct your path. So, yes, you will marry the man. But if you acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways. And not do things. Because really the criteria that sometimes we put in place is not the criteria that is going to serve our highest and best interests. So we only really get God's best if we put God in charge of the choosing process. So this if really got me and it got me stuck. Because it reminded me that I've got a choice in how things turn out in my life. It reminded me that I'm not a slave to so-called destiny or a slave to circumstances. But actually, if I allow myself to be, if I choose it, I am also a co-creator with God. That I am actually indeed seated with Christ Jesus. But the thing is, I've got to choose it. If, if, then, if I know who I am in God, if I live in the Word, then all the promises of God will be mine. And then it dawned on me that why is it that at times we stumble? in this road of preparation that even though the word says we are who we are we still do not see a materialization of all the blessings of abraham in our lives and the reason why we don't as the word says that my people perish because of a lack of of what that's right my people perish says the lord because of a lack of knowledge if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So what is it if you don't know the truth? What is it if you're not set free? You are in bondage. And those things we call strongholds, right? And what are strongholds? Strongholds, it's not like you know, and that you're gonna see him with his tail. No, no, no. It's actually so much simpler than that. A stronghold is an incorrect mental pattern in your mind. It is a lie, in other words. It is believing a lie. That is a stronghold, a lie that holds you captive because the truth sets you free. If you know the truth, you will be set free. If you live a lie, you are in bondage by strongholds. That is as simple as it is. 
Sometimes we want to complicate things so much. That's why the Word of God says, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Because when your mind is transformed by the light of the truth that Christ brings, all of these strongholds, all of these chains, boom! But what you got to do is shine the light of truth on a stronghold. Because you know, it feeds off the fear that it creates inside of you. It feeds off this uncertainty. It feeds off this unknowing. And the more you give it attention, the more it grows. And the more it consumes you, the more it becomes a beast. But you know what? You can nap it in the bud by shining the light of truth that Christ came to give to us. So I, I went back into, into the scripture and once again going on to this whole if and then. There's one part in the Bible, in the, in, in the book of Matthew, where this if and then became so clear to me. And it's perhaps the best illustration of how we are positioned and prepared for the good work. Matthew 4 verse 2. Let me share that with you and read that to you right now. The first verse begins, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Now I'll get back to that part of it. Verse 3, The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, Tell those stones to become bread. If you are who you say you are, then prove it. Turn those stones to become bread. Now, what gets me here is that in order for a lie to even be believable, it's got to be based on a truth. Do I look like a man? Do I sound like a man? So if you tell me I'm a man, will I believe you? Exactly. So he's got to come with something that has an element of truth in it. Here's an example. If you are hungry, was Jesus hungry? You bet he was hungry. He'd been fasting for 40 days. So yes, he is hungry. So there's truth there. But then he continues and says, If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. So what he was doing there is challenging Jesus' identity. It's like, do you know who you are? Because if you do not know who you are, you will believe what you are told. You will believe the lies. And remember, Wuti, just before Jesus actually went to the desert, he had just been baptized by John the Baptist. The heavens had opened, and like a dove and lightning, the word came from the heavens saying, This is my son. Challenges that very word. Challenges that very word and says, if you are the Son of God. Now, you know, Jesus didn't even entertain him because he knew who he was. And that's what the devil also tries to do with us tries to challenge your identity. So if you do not know who you are and who God has said that you are, you will start questioning and going down a path that will lead you only to destruction and to doubt. But if you entertain it, it will be like quicksand and will swallow you. So Jesus 
linyawo bakuqeda ukulanda linyawo ama hips umzimba wonke icale kancane lendaba kancane wakoba wathi it taste nyana ayikhinde wathi it taste ucele ukuntshela mangaba nazi and i'm sure you can look at your own life as well and you'll find situations where you say how on earth did i find myself here having unfanely a situation having unfanely in that i should have known better and the truth is you do know better but you let him in just a little bit these are the gates that we open up then he continues to say challenging his identity if you are indeed the son of god then do this so whatever temptation or thought will come from something that you really are in need of what is the challenge in jesus's situation the challenge is hunger what is the solution turn this bread the stone into bread the solution is there but the problem with this is first of all is jesus going to listen to the devil whose voice are you going to listen to and if you don't know the voice of your father you will listen to the voice of the devil because it sounds like what he is saying is right christ says that my sheep know my voice So if you do not know his voice you will follow any other voice that sounds like his and that sounds like it seems to be making any other sense that is why we need to be so engrossed in the word of god that we are able to be discerning in the spirit that is part of our preparation in order to do the good work that is part of the preparation to become a vessel of honor it's part of the preparation know who you are who god says you are know his voice so that when you hear other voices you will be able to know what oh, this one is not his one thing i love about jesus is that he actually didn't even entertain the devil he didn't say no i am the son of god because it's like a no brainer you don't have to prove anything to anybody If Christ says you are that, then I am that. If I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, then I am that. I've got nothing to prove to you or anybody else who wants to question me. The only account that matters is God's account. So if he says I am that, then I am that. So the question is, what are we exposing ourselves to? As we are being prepared to be good vessels that are going to be used for the honor and the glory of God, we need to protect ourselves from what we expose ourselves to. Nowadays there's social media, Boma Instagram, Boma Twitter. I mean the Twitter sphere and there's pornography, there is every single thing that you can find at the drop of a hat. And if you are in preparation you cannot be found lurking in those corridors because what you're doing is desecrating yourself you know who you are and you know whose you are and you've got no business being in places that you know are not for his glory so we need to be very protective of our space if you lose friends so be it if you lose even family so be it because one thing that's guaranteed is that you will never lose god abahambe abahambayo abakushiye abakushiyayo the word says that if they were of you they would never have left you So whoever is in your space is there because they are part of you and part of your vision and part of your journey. And when they are no longer part of that and they're going to be a distraction, they will be kicked to the curb. Because God is gracious like that. So if it's time to let some people go, if it's time to let some relationships go, if it's time to let some thought patterns go, let them go. Because if something does not grow you it is killing you nature does not leave a vacuum 
What is a vessel? If you look at the definition of a vessel, it says it's hollow inside. It's empty. So inter empty has to be filled with something. My question is, what are you being filled with? You are a vessel. What are you going to allow yourself to be filled with? Because you will not be an empty vessel. You will be filled with something. But that something is that which will make all, your, all the difference in your life. So how did Jesus react to this? Jesus answered, It is written. Know the word of God. Because the word of God is your sword. As you are being prepared to be vessels of honor. You need to live the word. Eat the word. Drink the word. Breathe the word. The word needs to be etched in your heart. If you're in the middle of something, literally even in your dreams, you need to be able to recite the word of God. It, it needs to get to that point. I don't know if you've had these type of situations, but I have. Where I'm in the middle of the night and I'm dreaming and I'm aware that I'm dreaming, but I'm living in my dream. And I am being attacked or something is happening, but I know that I'm in a situation where I'm able to change the atmosphere. But what I need to do is call upon the name of Jesus. What I need to do is go back to the word and speak the word to the situation. You think you are sleeping, but you are awake. The word of God needs to be so ingrained in us that Satan, when he approaches us, he needs to sniff. Oh, no, 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 not this one. Danger, hafar, ingos. Yeah, I'm so dangerous because I can sniff. Go to hambanani, go to tuleni, go to na obani. That is how the word needs to be in our lives. And that's exactly what Christ called for. It is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I love that. We live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know,